Okay, here we are with the wand and the computer. And I took the liberty of putting a little bit of Harry Potter festive decorations in the background here. Now, first thing you might be thinking is, wait, Windows on an Apple computer? What is this sorcery? Well, it's Harry Potter sorcery, of course. So let's open the app right here. And let's see if we can connect the wand now. Okay, looks like it's connected. It made a little ding sound, so I think that means it's connected. Okay, I'll be honest, that unboxing video was not my first time opening the package. I opened it beforehand to test the electronics to make sure they all worked, because I didn't want to use it for a video if I didn't know it didn't work. So I tested it beforehand, and what I found is that even though the website says it is, it is not compatible with Mac. What I did was uh, I used a partition on my Mac computer, which if you don't know what that is, that's when you like split the operating system in half. So it's half Mac, half Windows now, and I downloaded the software on the Windows side of my Mac so I can still use it now. But yeah, just a little clarification. This app for the Harry Potter coding wand, the Kano version, is only compatible with Windows computers and iPads. That's it. So you can always check the website to make sure your device is in the compatibility, of course. With all that aside, we can start the game now. And this is a pretty cool website because you can because you can go here and see like an entire map of the Harry Potter world. And let's do the first challenge here. See how your coding wand works. Now this is pretty cool. As you can see, it's very motion detecting. Yeah, very much like a Wii remote, I must say. And knock the object off the shelf. And that's it. And also, much like a Wii remote that's using Wii Motion Plus, um, you can press the center button to recenter the pointer. And I suppose if you wanted to, you could turn up the sensitivity of the tilting. So next challenge, experiment, experiment with color in the Owlery. Okay, read the instructions up here. Drag blocks and connect them to create code. The yellow beacon shows you the next step. Click next to begin. Pick up the block with your mouse or finger and drag it into the middle. Here I guess? Okay. Oh, looks like it worked. Yeah, wave the wand up to turn the owl red. Yeah, so this is how coding works. It's just step-by-step -step instructions. It's very simple things, like when the wand is up, make all objects to red. Look, I leveled up. Well, at least I think I did. I'm not sure how this platform works, really. Mystery Avatar Accessory. But yeah, with this Kano app, you get your own profile and everything. You can customize it. Let me see what mine looks like. Oh, and you get your own owl to customize too. Oh, and you get to choose your own creature too. Okay, that's pretty nice. Okay, I'll do maybe two more challenges. Let's see. Change the color of a potion. So it starts out pretty basic. 
but I'm assuming that after you get past these first few very basic tutorials, then you can go more in depth and like go all, all out crazy with the coding, which is what I'm excited to do, considering that I'm a prospective robotics engineer. Okay, while the wand is moving up. Then change all colors to red. Oh. Oh, we're not. They want to do a random color instead. Okay, that's how you do it. You have to start, first drag the change object to this color, but then replace the the specific color with the random color green block. I look at that. Um, it's a little bit hard to see on the screen there, but this is the cauldron that's changing colors. But yeah, this is pretty cool. Yeah, I definitely recommend this wand, um, especially if you like if you like coding, and uh, only uh, only if you can get the software working, because that's an important part. Because this is not software tends to get outdated more quickly than other items, so um, I would just make sure it's compatible with your with your um, computer situation first before getting it. Okay, now it's telling us to change the strength. Um, and what this looks like it, well, it's doing is that it might change the the physical movement of the of the pot there. It's going to apply a strength of 500 on the pot, which is going to make it jump. Look at that. So yeah, by shaking the by shaking the wand upward, we not only change the color um, of the potion in the, in the cauldron, but we also make the cauldron jump upward. Yeah, making sense? Nice. Okay, so I didn't level up. I'm still level one, but I'm getting EXP from all this. Next challenge. Ooh, color pygmy puffs. Looks like it's very color focused here. Also, I appreciate the British spelling of colors. Because there are lots of pygmy puffs, use a repeat block. Okay, so it won't, it won't just move one of them up, it'll move all ten up, I believe. I think I was ahead of them there. Okay, look at that. In the side menu over here, you can see they're all chaining colors. Hmm, I think I jumped a little bit ahead in the coding here. So I'll drag this out, and let's see what this is doing now. Okay. Now if we have random object turn red, it will just turn some of them red at a random time. Now if we replace red with random color, then every time we wave the wand, most of the piggy puffs will change the color. Okay. Okay, we're back to what I already showed you, but now the computer understands that I'm doing that. So yeah, wave it up. They all change colors. 
Okay, perfect. You know what? Let's do one more challenge. Ooh, I get a pygmy pup from that. What do you know? We're going to the Forbidden Forest, and ooh, looks like we're making magical sparks that look like fireworks. Okay, create sparks with your wand. This block will run code with it over and over while the coding wand is moving in a specific direction. So, the while, that's what's called a loop in code, and that's when it repeats one thing over and over again. Um, if you want something continuous or um, something that will never stop until the conditions are not met, then that's what you want happening. Because if I just tell it to, tell it to change something when I move the wand up, it, it might just detect that in just a split second that it's up. Uh, if I want to make the code change something while the wand is moving up, then it will send outputs to the computer all the time that I'm waving the wand upward. Now, it might not seem like a long time, but to computer, this is a lot longer than just one instant within this, if that makes sense. Okay, now this movement is a particle fizz. Okay, oh, and we can change the LED color. Hey, look, that worked. And that's a little hard to see here, but there are some sparks going on there. Let's see if I can make it a, a lighter green so you can see it. You can kind of see that a little bit better. Okay, now we're finally using a down motion. Oh, I shouldn't do this left-handed. Change it to red. I'll make it a lighter red. Okay, now let's see. Wave the wand up. Green fireworks. Wave it down. Red fireworks. Okay, nice. Now this LED is looking kind of look kind of orange to me. Let me let me see if I can change that. But yeah, down for red fireworks, up for green. Nice. Now, before I quit this challenge, I want to see if I can make the fireworks bigger. Now, just to experiment. Okay, that's okay. This is actually not the particle size. This is the particle location on the coordinates within the screen. So, I don't think we can change the size unless we just make more particles happen at the same time. Okay, one way to compensate for this is that we can make the wand make multiple explosions of fireworks around the same area. Just change the coordinates so they're all around the same area. So instead of making this one action bigger, we could just make multiple actions in one area to make it look like it's bigger. So that's the kind of thinking you have to do with coding. Think of how to work around the limitations of your system to make things work, work exactly how you want it. And that's why I have a lot of fun being a robotics major. So yeah, this is the Harry Potter coding wand. Thanks for watching, and look out for more brilliant content by Always Brilliant Confetti.